we continue with uh, gas solid reactions just quickly uh, recognize what was said a little earlier in gas solid reaction let's say we have coal reacting with oxygen giving you co2 or say wood reacting with oxygen giving you carbon dioxide and energy okay and energy our interest is to see that the energy it is available in coal or in wood is fully utilized. Therefore, we do not want to uh, make uh, we want to make a good use of the uh, material that is with us. So, complete consumption is of concern to us and we would like to understand conditions under which uh, we have uh, the complete consumption possible. So, we talked about film diffusion control. under which we said if there is a particle and then this particle the resistance the resistance to supply of gas is in the external film in the external film and therefore, the rate at which chemical reaction occurs is essentially determined by this, this concentration all the concentration drop occurs in the external film. So, the rate at which chemical reaction occurs is uh, determined by the resistance in the external film. We have considered this case and we have found out how the time for complete uh, time for chemical reaction is governed by T uh, the relationship we have got is T equal to uh, T by tau f equal to 1 minus R c cubed by R cubed where R is the particle size and uh, R c uh, we mentioned last time is R c is the unreacted core size radius of the unreacted core okay? R c. And since, since x b which is the extent uh, of uh, reaction 4 by 3 pi uh, R c cube rho b divided by 4 by 3 pi R cube rho b 1 minus this is. So, that is why this becomes simply x b. This case we have already discussed and we understand therefore, that for the case of film diffusion control the time for complete consumption divided by the time for uh, the time for chemical reaction to time for complete consumption is given by this where tau f we showed is simply rho b r divided by b k g times c a g where C A G is the concentration of gas which is outside the pellet and does not change as the reaction proceeds as showing that this solid is in contact with a large quantity of gas. Of course, this is an approximate situation we have considered we will relax all this as we go along. The second phase we considered is the case of reaction control. Here we have the solid okay, and then we have the solid in contact with large quantity of gas and we said this unreacted core this is the unreacted core of radius r c the radius of unreacted core is r c radius of the particle is r. Then we said that the time for complete consumption divided by the time for complete consumption um, time for reaction to time for complete consumption we showed is equal to t by tau equal to 1 minus of r c by r. Okay. We showed this yesterday, where tau r is given as rho b r divided by k s c a g. Okay. Just one moment, I yesterday I missed this term 3 here, okay. this 3 I missed b k s c a g. So, this case here you have the gas coming in at some concentration and this is the unreacted layer. So, the, the real drop from the sense that the drops here. So, that all the reaction takes place at the unreacted surface. Okay. This is C A G versus this is distance. Okay. These two cases we considered yesterday. Okay. The third case we were talking and then we could not complete and we were that is the case of ash ash layer 
diffusion control. Now, here what we have is we have a solid okay, and this this is the solid unreacted solid. Okay. Now, what is happening is that as the solid is reacting, this is the this is the unreacted layer, this is the uh, reacted layer, this is the reacted layer. Okay. Now, as the reaction proceeds, the uh, the extent of the reacted layer keeps changing and the ash layer diffusion control means that you know the, uh, the rate at which chemical reaction occurs depends upon the resistance due to the ash layer. Therefore, this resistance will keep changing as the reaction occurs which we must take into account. This is what we would like to do. So, let us rec recall that the rate at which chemical reaction occurs d n b by d t is r b s something that we have been saying for a long time. And we also recognize that R A S, which is this our reaction, please recognize our reaction is A gas plus B B solid giving you products. Okay. This is the reaction we have taken. Okay. So, the rate at which reaction occurs is, is the rate at which the solid is supplied, the rate at which the material is supplied to the unreacted surface multiplied by 4 pi R square. This is at r equal to r c. Now, the point that we would like to understand here is that in the case of ash, diffu ash layer diffusion control, the rate at which chemical reaction occurs is d del c del r 4 pi r squared. That means, if this is the unreacted surface, the rate at which material is supplied to this surface is the rate at which chemical reaction is occurring. And we also recognize that this, uh, uh, this interface keeps changing as time proceeds, which we must take into account as the reaction proceeds. So, similarly therefore, if, if you want to say what is R B S, then we can say it is B times minus of R A S. This comes from stoichiometry. Therefore, this is equal to B times D del C del R 4 pi R squared at R equal to R C. Recognize, recognize that we have left out this the minus sign from the Fick's law of diffusion. The reason why we have left out this minus sign is because in this case the direction of diffusion is opposite to the direction of positive R. That is why we have left out the uh, negative sign. Now, that we know that the rate at which chemical reaction occurs essentially is determined by finding out what is C, how C changes with R. Essentially, we need to find a way by which uh, C changes with R. So, this is what we would like to do now by looking at the differential equation that governs the variation of concentration inside the particle. Let us see how to do this. Let us quickly recognize the situation once again. Our situation is this. Okay. Now, we have the concentration, this is the unreact, this is R C, this is unreacted, unreacted. Okay. Now, what we are saying is that this concentration remains, I will write here concentration and then between this point and this point. So, I will say here that is the concentration drops. Okay. This is C A G, this is distance. Okay. Now, how do we take into account this variation of concentration drop here as the uh, reaction proceeds, so that the thickness of the reacted layer keeps changing. To account for that, I will write the diffusion equation input, that is input minus of output plus generation equal to accumulation. This is the diffusion. So, what is the input? 4 pi r squared d del c del r, this is at r plus delta r, okay. 4 pi r squared d del c del r at r. Okay. There is no generation and there is accumulation which is del c del t multiplied by the 4 pi r squared 
d r times epsilon showing that there is porosity that is where the uh, uh, fluids will accumulate. 4 pi r square del c del r is input at r plus d r and then 4 pi r square del c del r at r. So, this is what is the input and output and generation accumulation. So, this is the material balance for an, a differential element. <coughs> so, we can simplify this, we can simplify this and take the limit as you take the limit as r tends to 0, this becomes our diffusion equation simplifies as r square del by del r, r del by del r, r square d del c del r okay, equal to epsilon del c del r, okay, where r equal to r c equal to c naught. We know this r equal to r c, we say that c equal to 0 because of reaction. Okay. So, this is the problem that we have to solve that to find out just once again let us just recall the problem that we want to solve. We said just now, we said just now if you want to understand uh, what is the rate at which the particle is reacting, we must know what is the rate of chemical reaction. We said the rate of chemical reaction is given by V times d del C del R for multiplied by 4 pi R squared at R equal to R C. In other words, the rate of chemical reaction depends upon del C del R and we need del C del R through an appropriate understanding of the process. To understand this, what we have done is that we have set up the, the diffusion equation in an elemental uh, volume of the spherical pellet and then we have simplified this by taking the limit as delta r tends to 0 and then found that this is the diffusion equation that governs the process and the conditions are that this particle at the surface of the particle concentration is C 0 or we can call it C A G whichever is uh, appropriate for us and at r equal to r C there is C 0 which means the material has been consumed that is the point. That means, all the drop in concentration occurs in the ash layer. So, how do you solve this? Now, this c equal to c, when you say c equal to c 0, I mean concentration 0, which means that this is an irreversible reaction. Okay. Now, if it is a reversible reaction, then there will be an equilibrium condition and we will look at this as we go along. We can define some non-dimensional variables to make it a little easier T by tau d, okay, where tau d is the diffusion time the time in characteristic time for diffusion we can understand this as 4 by 3 pi r cubed rho b. So, this is the total amount of material that is with us and b times d c 0 by r by 2. So, this is this is the maximum rate of diffusion divided by the uh, the uh, average uh, uh, diffusion path multiplied by 4 pi r squared this is the maximum surface area over which the diffusion takes place. So, this is some way of characteristic uh, diffusion time. So, we can simplify this and write this rho b times r squared divided by 6 b d times c 0. Sometimes we call this a c a g this is uh, we mean the same thing. Now, you can ask how is it that I made a definition of tau d in this form. Now, actually since I know the final result, I found it convenient to write it in the form, but if it does not matter even if you do not write it in this form, the answers may not, will not change. So, what we are saying is that if you look at the time uh, time coordinates in terms of theta, which is non-dimensionalized with respect to the diffusion time, which is defined as total amount of material divided by the maximum rate of diffusion. Okay, This is the maximum rate of diffusion, this is the diffusion path. So, this gives you the diffusion uh, the, the, the moles of material that is coming in. So, this gives you total amount of material divided moles of material per unit time gives you an idea of the diffusion characteristic time and if you non dimensionalize with respect to diffusion characteristic time we get some feel for the time constant of the process. So, with this uh, non dimensionalization our equation diffusion equation can be simplified. So, let us do that now. So, let us simplify the diffusion equation. So, please recognize that I am going to replace this r in terms of y, replace time in terms of sorry this is time, this is time in terms of theta. Okay. So, when I do that we get 1 by r squared, 1 by y squared del by del y within brackets of r squared y squared cot y square d by r del psi by del y. Now, 
I also put one more damage psi equal to uh, psi equal to C divided by C 0. Okay. Equal to on the right hand side we have epsilon by tau d del psi divided by del theta. So, please I mean this is fairly straightforward there is nothing new being said here. So, this r squared I have written as r squared y squared del this r I have written this as r y r times y. Okay. This r squared I have written as r squared y squared. Okay. This r I have written as r y. Okay. The d rem remains as such. So, this c I have put as a c by c 0 I have non dimensionalized on both sides therefore, I have put it as del psi del psi on both sides. Okay. So, nothing nothing uh, new has been done. So, it simplifies this, this simplifies as 1 by y squared del by del y of y squared del psi by del y okay. I will put a d here equal to epsilon by tau d del psi by del theta. Okay. Now, I will replace this tau d in terms of what we know. So, let me just write this as del y y squared d del psi del y okay, equal to epsilon. I will just replace this tau d. We have already done that. We have already done that tau d. Tau d is where is tau d which is rho b r squared by 6 b d c 0. I will just put this put this here rho b r squared then denominator numerator 6 b d c 0 del psi by del theta. Okay. I am just replacing this tau d here using whatever definitions of tau d we have got before. Now, it simplifies simply some terms uh, uh, go away. So, that this diff, uh, diffusion equation which describes the uh, diffusion of uh, the reactant gas through the ash layer. So, it simplifies like this let me let me just write this once again uh, just for your sake. So, equation our equation looks like this 1 by y squared del by del y of y squared d cancels off. So, del psi del y okay, equal to 6 epsilon 6 epsilon c 0 by rho b r squared. This r squared has also got cancelled also. Where is, uh, where is this r squared? Please, let us just look at this once again. This r squared stays there, that is why. Okay. This r squared stays there. So, this is what cancels off. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. So, it is rho b del psi by del theta. So, this is the diffusion equation that describes the diffusion of our reactants. Now, we notice here that C naught, which is typically of the order of 0.05 moles per liter and then rho b which is the bulk density of solids typically 10 g mole per liter this is g mole. So, that and epsilon let us say about 0.3 typically. So, if you put all these numbers here let me just calculate for your say 6 epsilon is 0.3 c naught is 0 0.05 divided by rho b is 10. So, this becomes uh, 0 0.05, um, 0 0.15, point, um, how much is it? Point 0 0.015, point 0, about point 0 0.009. Okay. So, this, this this term, this whole term is, is a small quantity. Okay. Notice here on this left hand side, y has the order of magnitude is 1, order of magnitude, order is 1 and then psi also order is order is 1 okay. and then you have on the right hand side theta also order of magnitude is 1. So, everywhere the order of magnitude is 1. So, this is a small quantity in view of that we can delete this term. So, this approximation is called as quasi steady state approximation. What it means is that the accumulation of material inside the pores of uh, the solid is not very important from the point of view of understanding the diffusion and how the material gets consumed and therefore, we might as well look at the uh, left hand side and solve the problem. So, under the assumption that quasi steady state approximation is, is satisfactory that means, 
we can as well look at 1 by y squared del by del y of y squared del psi by del y equal to 0. We might as well solve this equation under the conditions that phi equal to 1 at y equal to 1 and psi equal to 0 at y equal to y c. What are we saying? What we are saying is that to understand the ash layer diffusion problem under the quasi steady state approximation, wherein the accumulation of material inside the pores of the solids are not very important from the point of view of understanding the material balance. Therefore, the diffusion equation can be I mean the solution to the diffusion equation can be approximately gotten by looking at the left hand side alone where del 1 by y square del by del y y square del psi del y equal to 0. This is the quasi steady state approximation. Now, this is a fairly simple differential equation and the conditions are also phi equal to 1, psi equal to 1 and y equal to 1, psi equal to 0, y equal to y c. What does this mean? It means that all the reaction occurs in the ash layer and there is no material left as the unreacted layer is reached. Okay. This, is the, in, this is the meaning of this uh, condition. So, let us solve this. It is a fairly simple problem to solve. So, we have when we integrate this, when, when we integrate this. I am just integrating this right now. So, maybe I write it once again just make it easier 1 by y squared del by del y of y squared del psi by del y equal to 0. Let me integrate once when I do that I get y squared del psi by del y equal to a constant. Okay. We integrate once again okay, del psi del y equal to a by y squared. Okay, I integrate this, when you integrate this I get psi equal to minus of a by y plus b. Okay. I put this, uh, our conditions are psi equal to 1 at, at y equal to 1, psi equal to 0 at y equal to y c. So, we can put these two conditions so that we get here uh, psi equal to 1 equal to minus of a a by plus b and then that is at y equal to 1 and then we have 0 equal to minus of a by y c plus b that is at y equal to y c. Okay. So, you can find out what is a and b which and substitute. So, it is very simply I will just write the solution here there is no need to go through this once again 1 by y c minus of 1 a is this and b equal to a by y c. Therefore, we can substitute for a and b and the solution to this differential equation we can get. So, I will write the final form. So, what do we get? So, let me just run through this once again without uh, losing the. So, under the quasi steady state approximation the equation that we have to solve is the diffusion equation. Now, this is the boundary conditions psi equal to 1 at y equal to 1 and psi equal to 0 at y equal to y c. This condition implies that all the reaction takes place in the ash layer and as the unreacted layer is reached the reaction stops because there is the uh, diffusing material has been completely consumed. Okay. So, that now our solution let me just write the solution psi equal to 1 by 1 minus of y c 1 minus of y c by y this is the solution. Okay we can write it in a slightly more comfortable form psi so equal to 1 by 1 minus of y c within brackets of 1 minus of y c by y. Okay. Now, having said this let us just quickly recall what we have said little earlier. What we said little earlier is that the rate at which the reaction occurs we said this little earlier that the rate of chemical reaction we started actually when we started we said we want to understand what is the diffusion that is that is taking place in the unreacted layer. And we said that the rate of chemical reaction which is R b s is given by b times d del c del r 4 pi r squared r equal to r c. So, what we said at that point is that once you, once you find out what is del c del r then we know what is the rate at which chemical reaction occurs at a given r equal to r c. What we have done is that we have got we have by, by doing a quasi steady state approximation we found out what is c what is psi in terms of y c we can put it in terms of r c equal to r and all that. So, let us do that right now. 
So, we want to now find out what is b times d del c del r 4 pi r. This is what we are interested in because that is what tells us the rate of chemical reaction. Let us try to do that now. So, what is d del c del r 4 pi r squared at r equal to r c. We want this. What is this? Now, now I want I am writing this in terms of the non dimensional coordinates. Please see whether I have got it right 4 pi y squared r squared okay. c naught del psi del y okay, divided by r. Let us see we have got all the numbers right d is here. Now, del c del r I have written del psi del r I put a uh, r here. So, they have taken care of that 4 pi r squared up to 4 pi y squared r squared at r equal to r c. So, this becomes y equal to y c. All right. Now, let us take this further this 4 pi 4 pi where is this d I have forgotten the d is this here 4 pi d c naught y squared okay. this r squared. So, it is r del psi del y at y c. Is it all right? What I am saying is our interest we know that this is this is the term we are interested in d del c del r 4 pi r square which we must calculate. We know what is psi therefore, I put everything in terms of psi by con converting r to y. So, I have done all that 4 pi r squared put all those terms. Now, we have got everything y now this whole thing at we want to calculate y equal to y c. Okay. So, what is what is del y del psi del y we can calculate del psi del y from here and then evaluate this at y equal to y c. It is fairly straightforward now you only have to differentiate this and put y equal to y c. Okay. So, let me do that it is not doing anything very complicated. So, please uh, okay. let me just restate what I have said already that we have got psi in terms of y c. We this is r b s we already said that this is r b s we already said this is r b s. So, we have put r b s in terms of the numbers that we know then I only have to differentiate to the psi with respect to y and evaluate this whole thing at y equal to y c, then we will get rate of chemical reaction inside the ash layer. That is what I am trying to do now. Please help me now. So, I will differentiate and substitute and then I will. So, we get d, uh, we would not go through all these details, it is fairly straightforward 4 pi r squared. So, this is what we want at r equal to r c. Okay. Now, we have said that is also equal to minus of r b s. So, I am differentiating and then putting all this together. So, we get equal to minus of r b s equal to b 4 pi d c naught divided by 1 by r c minus of 1 by r. Okay. What I have done? I have differentiated psi with respect to with respect to y put y equal to y c and then re replaced y c we know that y c what is y c y c equal to r c by r. So, I have replaced y c in these equations in terms of replaced y c as r c by r and simplified and I have got now the rate of chemical reaction under the case of ash diffusion control is given by. So, r b s okay, r b s this is the surface area okay, equal to b the minus b 4 pi d c naught divided by 1 by r c minus 1 by r. Okay. Is this clear? Okay. Now, if this is clear the rest is fairly straightforward. We have r b s let me write r b s equal to b times 4 pi d c naught divided by 1 by r c minus 1 by r. Okay. Now, we know that d by d t of n b by definition is r b s. What is meant by d by d t of n b rate at which the moles of n b changes with time? What is r b s? r b s refers to the rate at which chemical reaction. Okay. This is r b is rate per unit surface area multiplied by surface area which is relevant to this reaction to this kind of controlling regime. Now, left hand side is what d by d t what is n b 4 by 3 
pi r c cubed rho b. We know this. Okay. What is r b from here? Minus of b 4 pi d c naught divided by 1 by r c minus of 1 by r. Okay. Is this clear? So, what we have done? We have looked at the case of a spherical particle undergoing chemical reaction under ash diffusion control. We also recognize that the thickness of the ash layer will keep changing with time. Therefore, we wrote the diffusion equation for the ash layer. We recognize that as the reaction moves towards the unreacted surface, the reaction would stop because the uh, reagents, uh, diffusing reagent gets consumed. Therefore, we looked at the diffusion problem, the unsteady state problem. We said under the unsteady state, if you look carefully under the non dimensionalization, we understood that the right hand side, which is the uh, accumulation term, becomes unimportant if it is a gas solid reaction. Therefore, we deleted that term and said that this is called quasi steady state approximation. Now, therefore, we looked at the diffusion equation only the left hand side equal to 0. We solved the diffusion equation and then we um, understood that the rate at which chemical reaction occurs can now be given by the expression which is given as 4 pi b d c a 0 divided by 1 by r c b minus 1 by r. Now, therefore, this is the rate at which chemical reaction occurs and therefore, we can look at the uh, the material balance for the solid which is d by d t of n b equal to r b times s. Therefore, we have replaced r b s in terms of what we have derived and then we have an equation which tells us how the unreacted core changes with time. So, this is how we have simplified the problem. Let us go further now. We have now d by d t. So, on the left hand side we have on the left hand side can see here on the left hand side we will di I'll differentiate this. So, we get d by d t. So, I will differentiate this we get 4 pi r c squared. So, I have differentiated this 4 pi r c squared rho b d r c by d t that is the left hand side equal to minus of 4 pi b d c naught divided by 1 by r c minus of 1 by r. Okay or I will put it in this form rho b 1 by r c minus 1 by r okay, r c squared 4 pi I can cancel off okay, equal to b d c naught d t. Is it okay? Now, you have got 1 by r c minus 1 by r there is a minus sign there is a minus sign here d I have taken all the terms. Now, I can integrate let me integrate now rho b in the, if I integrate this, it becomes R c squared by 2, this will become R c cube by 3 R. Okay. You are going to go for the integration is from R to R c equal to minus of B d c naught t. Is it clear to all of you what I am saying? Okay. What have we done? What we have done, please, there is nothing, nothing complicated has been done using the using the quasi steady state approximation we have derived an expression for the rate of chemical reaction in terms of the uh, unreacted core radius and the initial radius and so on and writing the material balance for the solid we have found out how rc changes with time okay and this is how rc changes with time now we have to do the integrations let us do that now so now i have to do the uh, take the limits from r to rc Okay. So, when I do that, so let me write it once again rho b within brackets of r c squared by 2 minus of r c cube by 3 r going from r to r c equal to minus of b d c naught of t. Okay. C naught sometimes we call it a C A G and both are the same. Okay. Now, we will let us go through the limits rho b within brackets r c squared by 2 minus of r c cubed by 3 r okay, minus r squared by 2 plus r squared by 3. Okay. Now, let me take r squared rho b outside equal to minus of b d c naught of t. Okay. If I take this out, 
uh, r squared out what happens? Uh, I will remove the sign also here therefore, it becomes 1 by 2 minus of 1 by 3 is that ok. Now, this becomes minus of 3 r c squared by r plus 2 r c cubed by r cubed equal to b d c naught t is it ok. Let me see if I have got it right. So, it is this is 3 minus 2 this is 1 by 6. So, r squared rho b ok r squared rho b this is 1 by 6 ok. So, let me let me just do this again I am not happy with this please I am just happy not happy with this I will do it again. Huh? Let me just write that step once again rho b times r c squared by 2 minus of r c cube by 3 r minus of r squared by 2 plus r cube by 3 equal to minus of b d c naught t. So, this is what we have ok. Now, let me simplify this let me simplify this by rho b. Uh, so, this is r c squared by 2 I retain it like that then is r c cube by 3 r I retain it like that. So, this simplifying these two this is r c squared only r c cube sorry r c cube by 3 r. So, this becomes r squared by 6 equal to minus of b d c naught t ok. Now, the r cancels off. So, 3 is ok no problem. Now, I will take r squared rho b I will simplify this by taking 6 denominator. So, and then this sign also I will take it away. So, this becomes r squared ok minus of r c squared by 3 r c squared correct plus 2 r c cubed by r cube. So, this is by r uh, just a minute this is all right r c cube by r sorry by r have you got it right. Uh, I have taken 6 outside. So, it becomes this is ok this term is ok second term is with a minus sign therefore, 3 r square this term is ok this becomes plus and therefore, it becomes twice r c it is fine equal to b d c naught and t ok. Now, let me put this in the right form. So, all I am doing now is that I am going to take this r squared common. So, I will get rho b r squared by 6. So, because 1 minus of 3 r c squared by r squared plus 2 r c cube by r cube equal to 6 d c naught and t or 1 minus of 3 r c squared by r squared plus 2 r c cube by r cube equal to sorry, 6 I am inside. So, it becomes 6 d c naught t divided by rho b r squared. So, for the case of ash layer diffusion we have that the time dependence of the unreacted core radius is given by this relationship. Now, we notice here that at time t equal to or when r c is 0 what does r c equal to 0 means that the particle has been completely consumed which means at r c equal to 0 we have at r c equal to 0 equal to 0 t equal to tau f tau tau d or it is called as the time for complete consumption of the particle. So, let us just calculate at r c equal to 0 the whole thing goes off therefore, tau d becomes uh, rho b r squared 6 d c naught ok rho b r squared 6 d d naught is it all right. Therefore, you can substituting for this we get 1 minus of 3 r c squared by r squared plus twice r c cube by r cube equal to t divided by tau d. This is the uh, this is the point that uh, we wanted to mention. So, 
I mean going through a reasonable amount of simplifications and so on, what we have been able to do is that we have been able to find out how the unreacted core radius changes with time for the case of ash layer diffusion. Okay. X b by definition is 4 by 3 pi r c cubed times rho b divided by 4 by 3 pi r cubed rho b 1 minus 1. Okay. Therefore, r c cube essentially what we are trying to say is that r c cube by 1 minus equal to r c cube by r cube okay. or 1 minus of x b to the power of 1 by 3 is r c by r. Therefore, these terms r c by r r c cube can be put in terms of x b which is a measurable quantity. See what in an experiment it may be more difficult to determine the, uh, the core radius unreacted core radius, but the extent of reaction can be determined by various chemical methods. So, R x b is a more easily measurable quantity therefore, it is more convenient to express this in terms of R c by noticing that R c by R is actually 1 minus of x b to the power 1 by 3. Therefore, we can represent approximately substitute for R c by R in terms of x b. Therefore, this whole expression can be put in terms of x b. Therefore, the left hand side can be determined experimentally. So, for the right hand side T by tau d can be determined and that is how you can actually quantify what is going on in the in the chemical reaction. Okay. Having said this, a question that arises is that if we have in a in a general case, in a general case, we may have let us just look at the general problem and just state this whole thing once again. We have d n b by d t equal to R B S equal to B times R A S. This is this is the reaction A gas plus B B solid going to products. Okay. Now, we know from our what we have done tau reaction is rho B R divided by B times K S C A G. We know that uh, tau F equal to B R divided by 3 times b k g c a g. Now, tau d we have just now derived which is rho b r squared divided by 6 d c a g or c a 0 whichever we mean. This is what we have so far uh, shown. Now, what we want to recognize let me just write here just so that I do not lose the thread r b s r b s equal to minus of b k s c a g into 4 pi r c squared. This is for reaction control equal to minus of b k g c a g into 4 pi r squared for film diffusion control okay. equal to minus of 4 pi b d c a g divided by 1 by R c minus 1 by R. This is for ash control. This is ash, this is film, this is reaction. So, what are we saying? What are we saying is that we have considered so far cases in which only reaction is controlling, only film diffusion is controlling or only ash diffusion is controlling. Now, in a given situation you might have more than one uh, situation under control therefore, we must be able to handle the general case of all the uh, reactions uh, mechanisms being operating. How do we handle that? Now, we handle that by recognizing recognizing that resistance resistance equal to we can call this omega equal to potential divided by rate. Okay. So, in this case potential is C A G okay, and rate is R B S and we have our potential is C A G or in other words C A G divided by R B S. So, let us write. So, the resistance reaction equal to C A G divided by minus of B K S C A G 
into 4 pi r c squared which is equal to minus of 1 by divided by b k s times 4 pi r c squared. Is that clear? Therefore, the resistance can be written as C A G divided by R B S. Therefore, that is equal to minus of 1 divided by B times K S times C A G 4 pi R C square. That is what I have written here. This is for reaction. Omega film is C A G divided by minus of B K G C A G 4 pi R square that is equal to minus 1 divided by B K G 4 pi R square. Okay. Similarly, diffusion is C A G divided by you have I will write it like this 4 pi B D and this term comes on the numerator. So, 1 by R C minus 1 by R this is how the term comes out C A G will come here therefore, this comes out as the minus sign. So, minus of 1 by R C minus 1 by R divided by 4 pi b and d. So, what we have said here what we have done is that based on whatever we have done so far we have been able to determine what is the rate at which chemical reaction occurs we have done that already r b s expressions we have already got. Therefore, we are able to define what is called as a resistance the which is defined as C A G divided by R B S that means potential divided by rate and therefore, we get an expression for resistance for the three cases. Okay. Now, if in, in a situation we find that more than one resistance is important we simply have to add the resistances. So, in a given situation let us say where all the where all the controlling regimes are operating which means d n b by d t d n b by d t which is R B S in the presence of all the reaction all the controlling uh, mechanisms are operating which is omega 1 plus omega 2 plus omega 3 or omega this is film and this is reaction. So, in a general situation where all the uh, all the reaction film as well as diffusion is important you simply have to add these resistances okay, which means what? The, the rate at which chemical reaction occurs. So, now let me replace that so, slightly messy uh, uh, algebra, but let us do it properly now. So, d n b by d t we know this d n b by d t is what the left hand side is what 4 by 3 pi r c cubed times rho b I have to differentiate this okay, that is the left hand side. Okay. The right hand side is C A G divided by reaction film and diffusion. Okay. So, we can do that now 4 by 4 pi r c squared rho b. Okay. So, I have just r c squared rho b. Okay. I have just differentiated this, this is time. So, 3 cancels of 4 pi r c squared rho b okay. rho b d r c d r c also I should write and we should multiply this by we should multiply this by these resistances which you already calculated. So, I am just going to do that term by term. So, the first resistance is uh, let me it's, it's, let me write it again it is not coming out nicely 4 pi r c squared rho b multiplied by 1 by b k s 4 pi r c squared okay, plus 1 by b k g 4 pi pi r squared okay, plus 1 by 4 pi d b within brackets of 1 by r c minus 1 by r okay, d r c equal to minus d t times c a g. I hope we have not uh, see this is let me just go through this once again because uh, nothing nothing new is has been said. Please recognize, please recognize that d n b by d t is r b s and this these are the terms uh, rea omega reaction, omega film, omega uh, diffusion all that we have already derived here you see and simply I have just cross multiplying. So, cross multiplying. So, that is what we have done 4 pi r c squared rho b 1 by all these terms have been taken up properly minus sign is also there. Now, we can integrate and uh, our integration goes from 
our integration goes from what capital R to R C. Okay. Is this clear what we are saying? Or in other words, you see you can notice here the each of these terms is exactly the term that we went through when we did the whole uh, analysis independently. Now, they all occur together. Now, we can integrate and then get the answers. Now, when we integrate we find let me integrate this. So, I am just going to integrate this each of these terms going from R R to R C R to R C R to R C. Okay. Now, since we have done all these uh, before, so I will not go through the whole thing once again instead simply do the integration quickly. So, what I get on the left hand side is rho b r divided by b times k s times 1 minus of r c by r that is one term rho b r divided by thrice b k g into 1 minus of r c cube by r cube this is the film diffusion. The next term is rho b r squared divided by 6 b d 6 b d in 1 minus of thrice r c squared by r squared plus twice r c cube by r cube equal to c a g times t. Now, you can put the c a g here and recognize that if I put c a g here then it, it simply the, this the term that multiplies let me do that I will put C A G here, I will put C A G here, I will put C A G here. Notice here that this whole thing can be written as tau reaction 1 minus of R C by R okay, plus tau film 1 minus of R C cube by R cube plus tau diffusion 1 minus of thrice R C squared by R squared plus twice r c cube by r cubed equal to time. What are we saying now? What we have said is that if you have a particle, if you have a particle in which all the resistances are important, then the time that is required for uh, a given extent of reaction is simply the additive of the effects of each of the three reaction, film and diffusion. That means, whatever previously when we had only one of the resistances operating, so we had only this term equal to T when it is reaction control or this term equal to T when it is film diffusion control or the third term equal to T when it was diffusion control, um, ash diffusion control. Now, all of them simply it is an addition of the three resistances. So, what we are trying to say is that when the problem is linear, you can have this additive effects. Okay. So, just to cut this long story short, what we have said is that if you have all three of them controlling, then the results you will get is the results you would have gotten for the individual cases, but they are all added together. Thank you.